The patterns pictured here are advanced Métis finger weaving, which is more difficult than basic Métis finger weaving because it is like weaving and joining together two basic sashes at the same time. The three diamond arrowhead sashes pictured on the left are distinguished by the diamond pattern in the center of the sash and followed by arrowheads to each end. The arrowhead pattern, the fourth sash, is distinguished by simple arrowhead patterns throughout the entire sash. The diamond patterns have continuous diamonds one after each other for the entire length of the sash. Basic Métis finger weaving patterns result in the pattern diagonally repeating one color after another throughout the entire sash. Notice in the two rainbow sashes on the left that it's solid bars of color one after another for the entire length of the sash. For the film strip sashes, there is a solid bar of diagonal color followed by an alternating two colors of diagonal pattern in between. The salt and pepper sash has both the solid bar and the other bar having repeating alternating colors throughout the entire sash. To illustrate how the basic sash becomes the arrowhead pattern, we can look at the diagonal bars of color on the basic rainbow sash, how the color repeats in one direction only on each side. When we put them together, we see how it forms the arrowhead pattern. The arrowhead pattern and the diamond arrowhead pattern use the same technique, except that you need to make a decision, do you want to have the diamond in the middle of the sash? This arrowhead pattern won't have a diamond in it because just enough wool was left at the end to make the fringes when the sash is completed. If you want to have a diamond in the middle of the sash, you need to think of that beforehand and put your wool on the stick so that there's an equal amount of each strand on either side of the stick. So basically you're starting in the middle of the sash. You weave your arrowhead pattern down one end of the sash until it's completed. Then you turn it over, take out the stick and start weaving in the other direction with the result that you'll have a diamond in the middle of the sash. This wool has been set up to illustrate both the arrowhead pattern and the diamond arrowhead pattern, which is a decision you will have made before you start weaving. If you want the diamond in the pattern, put an equal amount of wool at the other end of the stick. So in other words, you'll be starting in the middle of your wool. You'll notice that I have an equal amount of wool from the center on both sides. Find your two center strands of the middle color and cross them over put one of them up. Now you will do exactly the opposite of how that strand started out. This strand started out going over, so next it will go under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, and put that thread across. Now to do the other side, you look at it and say, what happened there? Well, that strand went under first, so next it will go over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, and put it up top. Find the next two center strands, which are these two. One has come from underneath and one has come from over top, so they will be crossed in the opposite direction. The one that's coming under will go over next. The one that's going over will come under next. Put one of them up top until you're ready to use it. That one's coming over, so next it will go under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. The last thing it did was go over, so in deciding what will happen to this one, it will go under that one and you switch your threads. Going to the other side, it started out coming under, so next it will go over the front, under the back, over the front, under the back, over the front, under the back, over the front, under the back. Just came under, so put the one that was up there down and go over it. 
Now, after each row or each two rows, you should pull the one that was up there and the one that is up there on both sides. The one that was up there and the one that is up there. And this will start to make the pattern for you. Look at your next two center threads and you're going to repeat what we just did in the previous row. This one was coming over, this one was coming under, so we're going to cross them over doing the opposite. This one will go over, and this one will go under. Put one of them away for now. Go over, under the back, over the front, 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 put this down and go under it. Now you're ready to go with your next thread on this side. It just came under, so next it will go over the front. Notice that you need to weave these in the order that they're coming down from the stick on. The next color coming down is pink. Under the back, over the front, under the back, over the front, under the back, over the front, under the back. Just came under, so the next thing it will do is go over. Pull the one that was up there on each side and the one that is up there. The one that was up there and the one that is up here. Separate front to back and give each row a gentle tug. Pull the one that was up there and the one that is up there. The one that was up there and the one that is up there. Look for your next two center threads. This time it will be pink. This one just came under, so next it will go over. Under the back. Whoops. Again, it's a good idea to put that one up top until you're ready to do that side. Under the back, over the front, under the back, over the front, under the back, over the front, under the back, over the front put that down and go under it. Now to do that side, just came under, so it will go over the front, under the back, over the front, under the back, over the front, under the back, over the front, under the back. Put that down and go over it. Separate front to back. When you separate front to back, look and see. You should be able to see your weaving threads going all the way across if you have one of them in the wrong spot, you'll be able to see the difference like that. Give them a gentle tug. Pull the one that was up there and the one that is up there on both sides. And you'll start to see the pattern emerge. There. You'll notice that the wool is in exactly the same sequence as when we started, with the red on the outside and the blue in the middle. That means we've completed one entire arrowhead. You simply continue to repeat the same weaving technique until you complete the length of sash that you desire. Let's assume for the purposes of instruction that you've completed the length of your sash and that you've completed as many arrows as you would like to have at one end of the sash. You'll notice that uh, the arrow has a nice clean point because all of the same colored strands are moved to the outside of the weaving. Now you make a decision, do I want those tied off horizontally across or would I like them to follow the shape of the arrow? If you're going to tie them off horizontally across, you finish them the same way you do in the basic weaving where you take the last two strands that went across and tie them together and then do that to every front and back strand all the way across and then again repeat that from the middle. I would like to show you how to finish them off along the pattern of the arrow which means that we will undo part of the sash very carefully so that we get that shape. So starting from the side you pull the strands out pull each color out gently until you have the color that follows the arrow. Now, 
here is where you will take each front and back strand on each side and tie that into a knot. So we'll take these, these two are front and back. And remember to push the knot towards the weaving so that it stays close. Do that to the next pair. And the next pair. And you'll have a choice about um, leaving them the way they are or unraveling them and leaving them fluffy or unraveling them and braiding them into a different pattern. And you'll notice from different sashes that um, they're finished in different ways and it's up to you to decide which way you want it. Now here is our last uh, two reds at this side. So after we get them tied, we'll unfasten the other side. Just gently pull them out until you've got the uh, color of the arrow aligned again. And repeat the tie off down this side as we did on the left. There, the other side of the sash is now tied off. On a real sash, it's better to err on the side of caution and to give yourself lots of fringe because you always have the option of shorten shortening the fringes if you want, but as you can see on this one, the fringes are just a, a little on the short side. So give yourself lots of fringe to work with and then you can make decisions afterwards. Another thing you can do on the ends is you can tie the very ends into uh, a tiny knot if you so desire. At this point, you would um, be making the diamond pattern on the other end by uh, taking out the stick and sometimes you can just loosen it a little bit and slide it out. And if you're worried about slivers, make sure your whole stick is covered in tape. Turn it over. Now these aren't tied in knots like they are for the students, so they're just loops. So you just need to give each loop a little pull. And fasten the weaving so that you've got some tension. And you'll notice that that looks pretty much as it did when you started weaving at the very beginning of it. You have an equal number of strands on each side. Only this time it's already determined for you um, what, what are the strands doing. And you can see that these two are crossing over. So we'll put one up and on the other one it's already coming over the front. So the next thing it will do will be under the back, over the front, 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 and put it up. Then do the same thing on the other side. It's coming under, so it'll go over the front, under the back, 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 over the front. Now you'll want to um, tighten the wool a little bit, separate front to back, give them a little tug, pull the one that was up there, like that. And you don't want to pull it too tight or you'll end up with an indentation on your diamond pattern there, but just give them all a little bit of a tightening. Find your two center threads again, cross them, and repeat the pattern over the front, under the back, 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 over the front, under. Same thing on the other side, over the front, under the back, 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 over. Again, separate front to back, give your wool a little tightening, pull the ones that were up there and the ones that are up there. And you can see the diamond is emerging. And I'll complete that so that you can see the diamond. 
You can see that I've completed the diamond in the center of the sash. If you wanted to keep going, you would just simply weave this end as we had before, and you would get a continuous pattern of arrowheads from this end of the sash down. If, however, you wanted a diamond, 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 diamond pattern, instead of weaving from the center out, we would start weaving from the outsides in. To do that, separate front to back, have a look to see. Now this last uh, weaving thread that came to this side was going underneath this one. So what we would do is we would make it go over the thread that it just passed, came out, it came underneath, but now it would go over it and start going under the back, over the front, 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 and then under uh, just leave that one like that. Now the other side, it was coming underneath or over top, so it would wrap around there, go over the front, under the back, over the front, under the back, over the front, under the back, over the front, under the back. separate front to back and give them a little tug. Now those two will meet each other in the middle and cross over and become part of the other side of each one. Okay, now you can take the end one at the back, go over the front, under the back, 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 over the front. Do the same thing from the other side. You take the end one and it's coming over so then it will go under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Okay, here separate front to back. Give them a little tug. Do the same to the other side. Okay, start again on the other side. End one at the back, over the front, under 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 the back, over the front. Just like that. Try the other side. Over the front, Excuse me. Under the back, over the front, 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 under the back, crossing them over. Okay, separate front to back, give them all a tug, fronts and backs. Do the same to the other side. Okay, start over again. A diamond diamond pattern would repeat here. You can see the point of the second diamond being formed here. As we got to the original sequence that we started with, that is with the uh, red threads on the outside, then we would start weaving as we had up here from, this, from the middle outwards to get the rest of the diamond to form, this part of the diamond to form. Then when we got the red threads to the outside again, we would do the loop around and weave from the outside in to get the top part of the diamond. And you would continue doing that until you completed the length of sash that you wanted.